Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today is the first time in a long time that we are doing a sit down video because I've been traveling like crazy. If you haven't seen any content yet about my trip to Paris, go to the rest of my videos because I've posted so many vlogs that I'm so excited to share with you guys. And up next, I'm gonna share with you guys a little Q&A since some people asked for tips on going to live in Paris for a month. But seriously, I actually have a way normal life for a teenage girl. I mean, I get up, I brush my teeth, and I pick out my school clothes. First, I want to start off by telling you why I decided to go to Paris. I decided to go to Paris because I was just feeling kind of in a lull here in New York. Winter is really hard here. It's hard everywhere, I feel like. In the winter, New York can just be draining, and I wanted to get away from where I am, but I also wanted to just explore new things, and I had this spontaneous idea, and it felt like I was just called to it in my heart, and so I took action, and I do not regret it at all. I was really nervous leading up to it because of the cost, because of being alone in a foreign country, but it ended up working out amazingly. I had the best time ever, and I'm so glad I went, and it's definitely something that I want to do again. I'm just gonna get straight into the video and start answering your amazing, amazing questions. The number one question that I got from you guys was, what is the best way to find an apartment, a place to live? Word for word, someone just said, a furnished place that is shorter term. This is something that was really challenging for me when I was in my search for going to Paris, especially because I only gave myself two weeks notice. I came across a few websites that were very expensive for short term subleases with furniture, and I even checked Airbnb. The prices on Airbnb were insane for what they were offering. A lot of the places weren't very nice, weren't very well kept, and were so expensive. Basically, the story of how I found my place is that my initial thoughts when I decided I wanted to live in Paris was I started messaging people I knew who were in Paris. And I'm so fortunate to know people who were living there and I also happen to know some people who are just from there but don't live there anymore. I really tapped into my network and just messaged people and kind of followed up with them and tried to find out if they knew anyone who was subleasing. I also considered Airbnb if I wasn't able to find anything, which would have probably been like 5,000 euros a month if I was to pick somewhere that was like conveniently located and not dirty. One thing I noticed very quickly was that Airbnb basically jacked up the price by more than double for all of their places because rent in Paris is actually pretty affordable. Most people I knew were paying under 2,000 euros, which in New York is unheard of. Everyone's paying over that. It was just really nice that they have such great prices. As a visitor, I wanted to be able to access those prices and really through word of mouth is how I did that. Now, if you don't happen to have a friend who can help you and connect you with someone, what I suggest is to join a Facebook group or look for listings on places and websites like Craigslist or just find a way to like find people, whether it's like a friend of a friend who knows someone who lives in Paris, just like you gotta get in with the mutual connections if you wanna get a good deal. Okay, so the next question is about safety tips. This comment actually says, give details on safety tips. I've been hearing about Good Samaritan scams by traffickers. Yeah, that is huge. There's one very popular scam that if you're from Paris, you know, people will try to give you a friendship bracelet and then they'll either pickpocket you or force you to pay them. It is insane how much crime happens, especially in the touristy areas. So my number one tip for safety is to not speak. So when you get to Paris, you wanna kind of like live and act like a Parisian. So the second you speak, Everyone will know you're American, but you're able to dress and assimilate into the culture. People might think you're French or not really look your way. If you're on the metro by yourself and you decide you're gonna take a phone call, immediately anyone who's a pickpocket is gonna be looking your way and thinking this person might be an easy target because they sound like a tourist if they have an American or some other sort of accent, whatever accent you have. If it's not a French accent, they're gonna know you're a tourist and they're gonna target you. So if you're in a place and you're alone or you're walking alone at night, I highly suggest to not speak. Now that sounds so sad, but when I was traveling alone, it was okay with me and it's something that I had to consciously do. Like if I was out walking at night in New York, I often would take a phone call so that people know I'm not alone. But in Paris, it's just like mouth shut. You do not want people to know that you are an English speaker because then you are a target. My biggest tip is to not look like a target, which means trying not to speak in English super loudly, trying not to dress in a way that symbolizes that you are a tourist. Any sort of thing that makes you look like a tourist, I wouldn't do. I didn't end up using my tripod to take photos while I was in Paris, even though that's something I do all the time in New York because I just wanted to make sure no one thought that I was a tourist and wanted to steal my phone or whatever it is. The biggest thing I say about safety is to just assimilate into the culture and don't talk to anyone. I say this with a grain of salt because you're gonna meet your favorite people out on the streets, but really just like evaluate the people you're meeting. Like, 
If they look like they're not dressed in the best clothes and they could potentially be a threat to you, don't take any risks unless you really feel comfortable and safe and have a good feeling about the person who might have approached you and wanted to start a conversation, don't talk to them. If you have any idea they're not a good person, just like literally walk away and act like you do not understand them. That worked for me very well. Okay, someone said, am I safe in Europe as a black person, specifically in Paris? So I would say Paris is definitely a racist city, just like most cities are. And that's super unfortunate. There is definitely racism that goes on, but I was super fortunate to not experience it that much. I think one of the only things that really happened is I asked for help with my hair extensions and was like, kind of people were kind of like, oh, get away from me, like at a hair salon. And I felt like that was kind of like a microaggression towards people who wear hair extensions who tend to be black. But besides that, I got super lucky and I was so grateful for that. But I have heard stories about people experiencing racism and it's so unfortunate. And I feel like there isn't much I can say to do. Just like be yourself. And if people are being racist or unkind to you, half the time it's because you're American. And if they're just being racist and rude, it's just like, it really sucks. And we just have to like keep our heads up and keep trying. Another question I was frequently asked is, do you have to know French? I don't know French. I can say bonjour, ça va? Oops, I can't even say that, see? Um, basically, so I don't know French. I had a bit of background, but that's it. And my dad actually spent a month in Paris and the advice he gave me before I went is to always say bonjour and be friendly and start a conversation in French and then ask in French, parlez-vous anglais, which is French for do you speak English? Instead of just assuming that everyone speaks English. I think one of the things that Americans do that really turns Parisians off is assuming everyone speaks our language. Not everyone speaks our language. And in Paris, since it is a tourist city and most people you know work or associated with American companies, they're gonna speak English. But the fact that you assume that they do could probably rub someone the wrong way. So when you're not sure if someone speaks English, it's best to say parlez anglais. There was one or two times that I interacted with people who didn't speak English. One of those times was at a laundromat. And the woman that I spoke to was super, super confused when I was trying to speak English. And Google Translate ended up being my best friend. The guardian, which is a French word for like a superintendent in my apartment building also didn't speak, which was a huge um, obstacle between us because I always saw her when I was kind of in a rush or like not prepared with my translator out with what I wanted to say. So basically you're gonna get the Google Translator app, you're gonna click download dictionary for the French dictionary and you can record what people are saying. If I'm in a conversation with someone and they're speaking French, I can record what they're saying and Google Translate will pump out what they're saying or I can look up a menu or look up a sign with their photo app. It's just like the best app ever. Obviously this is not an ad, I'm a very small channel just starting out but I just think Google Translate is the best resource for you. The next question is, how did you meet people? Meeting people abroad is very challenging because you don't know who is a good person and who isn't. And a lot of people who aren't good people look like good people. I kind of basically had to take a risk and put myself out there. Since I'm on social media, I'm super active on social media. One of the main types of people I was trying to meet were other content creators and people who work in social media or work in my industry of fashion. So the two main ways that I met people was asking for, I didn't really directly ask, but just like my friends at home, um, if they knew anyone in Paris, I would try and connect with them or ask them to connect me and meet up with them and then maybe they would introduce me to other people. And the second main way that I met people was on Instagram. I just looked up Paris content and then I just DM people who have similar pages to me because that made me think maybe we have something in common and we should hang out. And that's how I met almost all my friends and I had so much fun with the people that I met on Instagram. It was very funny and I feel like I had plans almost every day with people which was amazing for someone who is new to a foreign city and by themselves. I highly suggest just putting yourself out there. It's almost like asking someone on a date, but you're just like, hey, do you wanna get drinks with me? It would be so fun. The big question that I get asked is, is Paris expensive? I live in New York, so my idea of expensive is probably different than a lot of people's because I'm just so used to and a price point that is honestly insane. I like couldn't even spit that out because of how insane it is. Long story short, no, it is not expensive, but it totally depends on what you're doing while you're there. Like if you're shopping at Chanel every day and eating at the touristy restaurants that are like all over Instagram, it's gonna be expensive. But if you are shopping for groceries, it's gonna be half the price. Rent is gonna be half the price of New York. And also just like a lot of the activities are a lot cheaper. Museums can be expensive, um, but it's very, very, very possible to have an affordable weekend in Paris. 
I would say the flights there are going to cost you more than your time in the city. And once you get there, it's actually pretty cheap. I was so blown away by the groceries, like eggs were like a euro or two. It was crazy. Um, so that's basically my thoughts on that, on price. Last but not least, how does one pack for being away for an entire month? That is a challenge in itself. My bag was stuffed. What I ended up doing is packing a capsule wardrobe and then a few statement pieces. So if you're not familiar with a capsule wardrobe, think like oversized shirts, think basics that you can just wear a million ways in one. This was such a good idea for packing because I ended up having just outfits on outfits on basically a few simple items and it really went with the Parisian aesthetic so I was very happy with my decision to pack a capsule wardrobe. Then those statement pieces that I brought ended up popping when I was trying to get a photo for Instagram or I was going to a fancy restaurant and I only wore some of those statement pieces once or twice but they were so worth bringing along because I always want to make a statement when I'm traveling. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This totally ends the Paris series that I was having on my YouTube channel. I am back in the US now and the rest of my content is going to be New York vlogs and maybe some fashion tips. So stick around if you liked this series and if you haven't seen the series, you need to check it out. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you are new here, please subscribe. I am a smaller channel, so would love some support. Would love to see you guys back again. Have an amazing rest of your summer.